You're watching Swimming World TV. I'm your host, Brent Rudamel, and here we are at the International Swimming Hall of Fame for the official groundbreaking for the renovation of this inc incredible historical uh, facility, and we have Jesse Visayo here who's going to join us today. Thank you for inviting me. It's great. So Jesse, if you don't know that name, he's, a, he's the uh, longtime greatest athlete. He's been inducted into the International Swimming Hall of Fame on top of the world in 1978, uh, world championship, world swimmer of the year. Uh, and you were you were still in high school or coming out of high school at the time? I still I was still in high school. I mean, just an incredible story. So let's let's kind of go through the years. I mean, born in Puerto Rico, and what took you out to you know Southern California to, to swim at Mission Viejo at a young age? Well, uh, when I was 11, my family moved to Florida, just down here in Miami, and uh, we used to come down up here to the Hall of Fame and enjoy the swimming meets here, but. When we were 14, my dad uh, moved us all out to California for Mission Viejo, it's strictly for swimming. He actually, oh, really? he actually was uh, traveling uh, quite a lot, uh, two weeks in California, two weeks in Florida here, and two weeks in Puerto Rico because he had businesses in, uh, here in Florida and in, my, and in Puerto Rico, and he had the family. You had brothers, brothers and sisters, and everyone was swimming? Yes, we were uh, five boys, and we were all swimming in the pool. Yeah. It was, uh, Quite a bit. We're, we had one in each in each group. <laughs> so, uh, were you what, 13 or 14 when you moved there at the time? I was 13. Um, actually, we didn't have a clue. We were in Jamaica for uh, one of these trips. You go and you do the you know the exchange. And people, I stayed in some family's house, and they come up and stayed at our house. So when we got back, he was waiting at the airport with uh, bags, full, a car full of bags. He goes, we're moving to California. <laughs> and we drove strictly to California that day. And it he, sounds like a Beverly Hillbilly song. Uh, pretty much, <laughs> no, but this is, this is true. Um, he drove and he drove around and um, he looked for hotels that had uh, pools big enough to swim in the morning before we took off. So yeah. he was one of those dads that uh, wow. really took care of the swimming. What a fortunate thing for you. And uh, to, and walk on deck, and w w in the same lane was Shirley Babishoff, just right, th right, right down the well, lanes over. And uh, yes, uh, for me it was big time because I was a fan, a big fan of the swimming world, and I kept track of everything. And uh, you know, I read about this guy, Shirley Babishoff, and and at that time, Steve Holland, the uh, 15 uh, the mile world record holder, was there at the pool too, also training when I got there. And, uh, Brian Goodell there. Brian Goodell, but Brian was not still famous when we got there. He was, you know, later on he, when he was, uh, you know, breaking world records and winning gold medals. Uh, but it, you know, and and I was very proud to be part of that group because at one time the high school had 17 Olympians. You talk about Shirley Babishoff, but you're talking about people from Brazil, from Australia, from Great Britain that were all training there. It was pretty much a training center, you know. And you're on, in 78, you're 400 IM? Is that your yes. specialty? Well, I, I Did I you pick that mile. event or that, or, well, okay, so you're training distance in, in, yes, in, in, in yes. the mile and then, so did, did uh, you pick those events or those, event, or those I, events picked you? Actually, they picked me. Uh, we had Brian Goodell in the, in the, in the team, we had uh, Casey Combers in the team, so yep. the long distance swim, was taken care of by them and the, um, you know, the middle distance Casey and we had sprinters, so uh, it was pretty much the the order of the events and where they needed me to fill up. So take us back to the 1978 World Championships. You know, incredible meet for you and and wh where was that at? Do you remember? Berlin. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. So what? Well, so you're what are you? Sixteen? <laughs> I just turned seventeen. 17? Was, we had the uh, trials or nationals at uh, Woodlands, Texas, and it was uh, actually my second world record because I had broken the world record in short course meters, but uh, then uh, I broke the world record there and made two uh, two other events to swim at the uh, at the world championships. Pretty young, but I mean you're. You won. You won multiple set world records there. I mean, I won two goals and a silver. Uh, won the the 200 backstroke, the 400 IM, and got second in the 200 IM. And the world record was in the 200. Was was it the, the 400, 400 IM? 400 IM. Yes. So now you're poised for for uh, 1980 or two, uh, two, uh, Sorry, yeah, 1980 Olympics. Yeah. Uh, in, well, in, in Moscow. 
Well, we had the, uh, the next step, the next year was the Pan Am Games. Back then, the Pan Ams are still a big, big meet okay. for the U.S. Because then when Pan Pacific and other meets came around, you know, they started dividing the teams. But back then, Pan American Games were big. And uh, yeah, I went to those. I got another two golds and a silver. So I was, it was there at the meet where we finally found out that we were not going to go. The, the U.S. was going to boycott. So when, so you were at the Pan American Games yes. when you found out that uh, the, the 1980 was, Olympics was born. What, what was your first first? I thought? actually stopped swimming for a couple of months. Yeah. And then they, uh, they were talking about doing the, uh, you know, the trials at the same time as the games and comparing the, the, the times and, and this and that. It, it didn't sound like a lot of fun to me, but, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I learned that if God gave you some talent and you had invested so much into it, let's try to finish it right. So we kept swimming. So that that's what you looked at it at the time. Now, after all these years, how do you how do you look at it now? You know, when when the boycott was, it didn't, the decision wasn't made in one day. They talked about it for a long time, maybe about four or five months. It was always in the news: Are we going to boycott or not? And they had a group of, uh, we had so many good swimmers in the team, they had somebody, I don't remember who it was, it was somebody from the Army to come and talk to us, or somebody, but, but the name and the rank or who was, I don't know, but they talked about, you know, uh, us uh, uh, doing the sacrifice of following or doing what the, uh, president wanted to do and not to go out there and bat mouth it or, or you know join the effort since people have gone to war and fought for this country why don't you uh, back the president and do this uh, you know what is it 40 years later yeah you know, come on <laughs> you know <laughs> it's all the pretty good but did you at, at the time did you feel you were being patriotic by by and, supporting and the president? In a little bit, you know. They yeah. sold it pretty good then. And yeah. now you look back like uh, that didn't make a bit of difference. No. It, I mean, it shouldn't have, shouldn't have been used for what it was. And, uh, and and what was it supposed to be used for? You know, politics. It was just... But what, what are the Olympics supposed to be used for, in your opinion? The Olympics, I mean, it's a showcase for every country to show what they have been able to produce in sports and in the way their society. And the and sharing, that's, yeah, and the yeah. cultures. Oh, and, and, and in doing it in a peaceful way and competing and congratulating each other. And, and one thing in Mission Viejo and everything we always did, we share everything. We didn't have any secrets. Yeah. The Chinese, you want to come and train with us? Hey, the Russians, you want to come and train with us? It happened. I was there. I was like, why don't we do this, you know? but. It was like that. Sports was meant to be like that. Yeah. So at Ishoff, in my in my tenure, we, we we looked at the mission, and it was it was brought upon me uh, to to kind of dwell on the Hall of Fame being international, and obviously we represent the best of the Olympics here. But in our mission, we actually inter interjected the word sharing of cultures, and. And I think the Olympics, to my opinion, is you're actually, how, how better way to understand your, your enemy or, or your, okay. or your friend than to understand their culture and their way of thinking, the friendship. Have you have long, do you have long time friendships oh, now? You know, uh, yes, I do. Around I, the world? And around the world. And let me tell you something. I, 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 my coach, I, um, I have a small swimming team, but one of the things we do, I, I have what we call the friendship meet. And it was—it's about that. It's about the friendships you uh, you 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 develop in in this sport. And I try to tell you, you know, uh, other kids, and you don't see anybody fighting with the ref. You don't see anybody uh, having any issues. When most races are finished, you see the guys that got him in second. They're not losers. The second and third guy come and congratulate the first guy. Hey, great swim! And that to me shows uh, a lot, a lot yeah. of respect. And the way things change, I mean, none of them are losers. Everybody has the right to go out there and try to win. Only one's going to touch a wall first. And that's great, but uh, the other ones should, you know, I tell my kids, uh, my swimmers, he, he, if he beat you because he earned it, 
Yeah. You know? So And there'll be another day. There'll be another day. You wanna beat him? Let's go back to work right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah, it's a, that's, uh, I think it's like swimming is a uh, short life. Uh, by that I mean you'll live everything you'll do in life in the short term, you know. You'll have your ups and downs. You'll set your yeah. goals. It mirrors. It mirrors all the lessons that you had the rest of your life. Yeah. I wish everybody had to swim for a while. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. So after the let, after the letdown, the, but you 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 found a way to refocus and make it to 1984. How, so going back and, and hmm. then representing the United States in the 1984 Olympics in LA, w where what was going through your mind and well, I mean, was it hard to refocus and go forward? You skipped a long ways. Oh, well, I skipped from 80 to 84. When you talk about 84, 1982, I had uh, a knee uh, surgery, a complete reconstruction. That's right. And to me to come back and be able to swim breaststroke. For 400 I am or it's For 400 I am, it was, I'm very proud of my comeback. I call it that, my comeback. Uh, I don't, not happy with my results. You know, I think, I don't think anybody's ever happy. Or, or people that get to this level, yeah. they're never happy. They wanted to do something else. I didn't miss this, I missed that. And I got my issues, but I'm happy uh, being able to come back. and, and did what I did. It was two different periods in my life. So the re the reconstructive surgery. I mean, uh, what what was what was the was it a tear of some sort? It was no, I had a, a total reconstruction of my left knee, and I had phlebitis. So I was pretty much six months in. My goodness. It was it was pretty yeah. bad. Uh, I got pictures. My my my, you know, my knee was huge. And I doubted that I could swim breaststroke, and to be able to come back and do it, uh, to me, it was a lot of satisfaction. Uh, you know, when, when my first time, uh, my first, uh, a young kid trying to win, great. After a while, you try to defend. Oh, I don't want to get yeah. in it. The thing changes. And then after going through the knees and, and losing rec world records and losing the opportunity, trying to win again gave me a new and, and a little older and pretty much uh, with different coaches and different perspective. Just being older, it was, it was different. It was a great experience. Uh, when I finished, I swore, no, my kids are not gonna swim. <laughs> I'll never hit the water again. We're forget, not moving to California. Oh, forget <laughs> it. You're playing tennis or golf. Why not? No, but uh, and I took them. Yeah. But uh, the character this builds, yeah, it's unique. I love to hang around swimmers. So I have to ask, are you, are any of your they all swim. They all swim. swim. <laughs> yeah, the, the chlorine. They all swim. Yeah. Well, there yeah. you go. So and you're coaching now, and you're enjoying coaching. Yeah, I enjoy very much coaching. Yeah. But uh, you, you know, you were uh, uh, president of your federation of Puerto Rico at. Uh, yeah. Well, I was working in Puerto Rico with the family, doing other things, and. Uh, and I got involved with the Federation uh, as a vice president, you know, they're supposed to do just sit around and wait for the guy to get sick or something to do something. <laughs> but, but That's uh, the definition of vice president. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the guy quit after three months. And so I had a four year term to quit. Oh, <laughs> you kicked up. So I picked the, I picked the ball, he kept going, and then I ran another term. And, and, but uh, it was a challenge. You get to see the politics of the sport. It's 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 a lot of politics. It's sad that it is. I I truly felt like I worked for the kids. I you know uh, I was happy because when I I got involved because I wrote an article saying oh swimming is in danger of extinction here in Puerto Rico. I said hey put your money where your mouth is. Do something about it. You know so we did and and actually there were 600 kids swimming in Puerto Rico. And, and organized swimming, and by the time we left, there was a thousand six hundred. Wow, good for you! And a team multiplies, and we spread diving, and we spread uh, synchronized swimming. We were really, really um, same quality of swimmers. Say it, we got better. We got, but yeah. there was more. So there you was, made you, you yeah. made an improvement. You so did. I was happy with that. Uh, tough times, really tough times. I stay away from most of those things right now, you know. Yeah. But uh, well, with the hurricane going through, what's what's the state of swimming now? Oof, a lot of pools are still empty. Yeah. Now uh, this month, they, uh, last month they opened the uh, the main pool in, in the metropolitan area, 
and we're actually That's going been down to a meet for over a year. Yeah. Yeah. They just opened it, and we're going down to a meet to support them. So we're going there uh, next month, or oh, this month on the twenty fifth. Good. Yeah. So excited for that. Are there any uh, Visayos in Puerto Rico right now? Well, there's a lot of Visayos. All my <laughs> brothers are still there, and they have their children and their grandchildren uh, swimming. None. 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 I tell you, uh, lack of water. Mm. They, uh, they, they really suffer. Yeah, it takes tonight. a lot. And uh, there's so many other things that are just as important, you know. But first, safety. You know, you still go down there, and a lot of the traffic lights are not working. You know, yeah, uh, you have a lot of businesses that have closed, and and when you don't have income or a way to create income, it gets difficult. But things are going better. You have a lot of new leaderships, and uh, things are going to go well. Well, I think most Americans want to really see it recover fast, and frustrated with some of the progress. But yeah. that's the other po politic side. Yeah, very much so. Well, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you. Great here. So we're here at the Hall of Fame with the groundbreaking. And you got many, many memories in the pool here. I've been coming here since I was 11. I tell people I used to look through the cacks and sometimes it was closed. And uh, yeah. so, and, and, and like I was telling some people, you know, through all my swimming experiences, uh, being inducted in the Hall of Fame to me was uh, the biggest thing. Awesome. You deserve it very well. Thank you very much. Thanks. This is Jesse Visayo. I'm Brent Rudermiller saying, if you want to win, first help someone else win.